So I like to start the Born Harbor cycle with the heat of formation. That's making one mole of the chemical from the elements in the standard state. Uh, you know that barium chloride is solid. It's an ionic lattice. In IB, all ionic crystals are solid. And the standard state of barium is also a solid. It's a metal. All metals, except for mercury, are solid. And the standard state of chlorine is Cl2. It's a gas. It's diatomic. Which gases are diatomic? Well, you can just remember Brinkelhoff. Bromine, iodine, nitrogen, chlorine, hydrogen, oxygen, and fluorine. Now, I know the energy associated with that because it's in the question. Uh, and that is minus 860 kilojoules per mole. Now, it's minus 860. So you can see that that arrow that I put in must be wrong. Positive arrows go upwards and negative arrows go downwards. So let me fix that arrow to get the correct direction. I'm not putting the units in because it will get too cluttered. But this here is the uh, standard heat of formation. And again, I'm going to avoid putting the standard signs in as well. These little standard signs are going to clutter up, so I'm not going to put those in. Next step, I want to turn the barium into a gas. So turning uh, anything into a monatomic gas is called atomization. So that's the heat of the heat change of atomization, the enthalpy change of atomization for barium. And that number is given as well. It's plus 160, 175. Plus got to carry on. Nothing's changed with the chlorine. That's still a gas. Keeping the focus still on barium. Now I'm going to rip off a couple of electrons at the same time to make barium 2 plus. So to take off one electron, the first electron is the first ionization energy, and to take off the second is the second ionization energy. So I'm going to sum those two together in this one step. So the first ionization energy, well, that's in the data booklet. So let's peck around, try to find that. Here's the first ionization energies. Uh, and so for barium, there it is. So 503 and the second ionization energy, that's in the question. So that's uh, 966. All right. I'm going to keep that chlorine still there. And people often forget to include the two electrons that you just ripped off. Lovely. One more step up. Now I've got to split this chlorine into atoms as well. So the barium is unchanged. Don't forget to keep it as a gas. And now I've got two chlorine atoms. Now that is the enthalpy change of atomization of chlorine times two. But that isn't in the data booklet. So I'm making two chlorine atoms. So the enthalpy of atomization of chlorine times two, because there's two of them, it's not in the data booklet. It's hidden in the data booklet, the answer to this one. Let's go back to it. So it's in the bond enthalpies. That tells you if you have 242 kilojoules, then you can break apart the CLCL bond. Well, that's actually what we want to do. Atomizing chlorine is basically taking the CLCL bond and then breaking it apart. So if I put in 242 kilojoules per mole, 
I'll end up with two chlorine atoms because I'd have broken that covalent bond. So this is the, uh, the energy change. It's the bond energy. for the CLCL bond. And that was plus 242. So now we're going to go down. Important that you show the arrow going down. We've missed out the electrons that I told you to be so careful to keep track of as well. Let's pop them in. That's a point off in IB. I'm going to jam those electrons on now. So I've got barium, two plus, gas, and now I've got two chloride gaseous ions. So what is that called, where you're jamming on electrons to gaseous chlorine to make chloride ions? Oh, well, that's, that's what the unknown. So the unknown here is a, the first electron affinity for chlorine. And you know what? It's double that. It's double it because there's two of them. That's my unknown. Uh, one final arrow, and we've completed this Born Harbor cycle. So if you take one mole of a crystalline substance and turn it into its gaseous ions, that's the arrow I just drew, that's called the lattice energy. Now the arrow can, in theory, go up and down, but the IB likes it going up. And if it's going up, then positive. Now that's in the data booklet as well. So let's have a poke around. There it is. 2069 plus. Now we're pretty much done, except for the, the shouting. Let me have one more quick check. So now Hess's law states that the energy change for a reaction is independent of the pathway you use to get there. And there are two pathways that we're using to get to the unknown here. So it doesn't matter which pathway you take, the energy change is still going to be the same. So essentially clockwise, arrows equals anti-clockwise arrows. So let me add up the clockwise arrows. So my clockwise arrows are plus 175, plus 503, plus 966, plus 420, 242, plus twice my unknown, which is the first electron affinity of chlorine. Let's look at the anti-clockwise arrows. The arrow's going the other way. Well, that one's going the other way, and this one here is going the other way. So it's going to equal minus 860 plus 2069. Now I just have to solve for x. Mm -mm -mm. So that gives me 1886 plus 2x equals 1209. So that gives me a value of x as 1209 divided by minus 1886 over 2. 338.5 kilojoules per mole. Ignoring sig figs and all those rules. Uh, well, uh, hold on, don't forget the negative. Drop the negative there. Well, let's see how close that is to the real answer. Okay, so three minus 349. Pretty close. So why aren't they exact? Well, maybe they weren't done in standard conditions, the experiment. There's theoretical and experimental 
lattice energies. That was, uh, I'm not sure which one we were using there. And uh, average bond energies, you use those, taking over a range of values, la-di-da. All right, and we're done.